Uh, at this point, I want to stop and talk real quickly about a study I found online that was printed uh, and uh, sent out for uh, public distribution. But it was a study commissioned by the U.S. military, and it was a really interesting study having to do with uh, wear analysis on pump components in these Rusamaster standardized pumps. And the reason why the military uh, actually uh, requisitioned this study was because during Desert Shield and Desert Storm, uh, they were using a fuel over there. Instead of diesel fuel, they were using a fuel, I think it was called Jet A, which is an aircraft turbine fuel. And they were using that um, in all of the uh, engines over there that were originally designed to run diesel. And they started to see a uh, increase in the failure rate of injection pumps on um, standby generators with inline engines and also uh, Humvees with uh, V configuration engines. The uh, you know, the study talks about how in a, in a uh, V configuration, the pump sits on top of the engine between the cylinder heads, so it's subjected to higher operating temperatures than on the inline engines like the generators, like a straight four or a straight six cylinder, the pumps on the side, like on my tractor. Um, but anyways, it, it talked about uh, how they did this analysis, and uh, it, I mean, they really did some crazy stuff, uh, some really in-depth scientific work. Uh, you know, electron microscope work. Uh, they used some sort of a, uh, I forgot what the name of the machine is, but they used a device that has a tiny stylus on it that they drag across the surface and it can actually sense how rough that surface is. Uh, so, you know, you might not be able to see something with the naked eye, but they could see it. Um, they had all these pumps that were turned in from various uh, pieces of equipment. And then they even had a few pumps, uh, a couple of pumps, two or three of them that were, I think they looked at nine pumps total. And I think they took, uh, or maybe it was more, but they took like three or four of them from vehicles that were running on Continental U.S. diesel. So these were vehicles that were stateside and being run on regular good old American diesel fuel. And they used those as like controls and they were comparing them to these other pumps. And what the determination was in the end was they figured out that um, the, uh, I think they actually called it lubricity, which I've never heard that word before, but uh, you know, I've heard of viscosity, but uh, the lubricity of the jet A fuel was uh, less than the lubricity of the diesel. And that was causing premature wear and what they believe premature eventual failure of these pumps. The majority of the pumps they got in, the um, this part right here was seized. And what happens on these pumps by design, the drive shaft, which is right here, has this tang on it right here. The reason why it's got this tang is this is actually supposed to be the weak point. So what happens is, theoretically, what's supposed to happen is if the engine's running and the pump seizes, that tang's supposed to shear. Um, or is it, I'm sorry, not that tang. I think it's right here, this, this part where they made the... Uh, Made it kind of skinny. I think maybe it's right there. Well, anyway, somewhere there's a weak point. This shaft's supposed to snap and give itself up to save the uh, gear train from damage on the motor. So, anyways, they had a bunch of these pumps that were uh, seized. And when they took them apart and they did the wear analysis, what they found in the majority of the pumps was the uh, the bulk of the wear was actually in the transfer pump section, this part back here, with these veins and that other, what is it, this donut chip sucker here. This is where the, the most of the wear was concentrated. 
Uh, they also talked about how uh, there were different versions of these pumps. There was an Arctic version of this pump, and the Arctic version actually had parts that were, um, I think they were harder and more durable. And the way you could tell those pumps uh, was the, the shape of these veins was different. And I think on the regular ones, there was a groove in the back. And so these actually look more like the more updated, uh, if you would get replacement ones, which again, somebody may have already replaced these, they would be uh, like these. They wouldn't have that groove. There's no groove on these. Anyways, th there was a lot of interesting information in that study. But to sum up, they were talking about basically how important it is because this pump is entirely lubricated by the fuel that's running through it. So that brings me to my next point. Modern diesel fuel has low sulfur content and that's for emissions purposes. Now somebody might correct me on that, but I believe that's why there's low sulfur content. The point is the sulfur in the diesel fuel is what provides a lot of the lubrication or the lubricity of the fuel. So that's why uh, it's important that's in there that it's in there and that's uh, leading to what a lot of people believe to be uh, premature wear and failure of injection pumps. So that's why there is a whole market out there of diesel fuel additives. And I know my engine rebuilder and another diesel mechanic I know, they both swear by um, the Amsoil products. Uh, they make a diesel fuel additive. So I think that I'm going to start using a diesel fuel additive with this old tractor and probably with the Ford too, uh, the Ford 1920, because that injection pump I'm sure is very expensive to get rebuilt. It's not like this one. It's not something I'd feel comfortable taking apart and messing with at all. Uh, that's a more modern Japanese design. Anyways, um, so yeah, the diesel fuel additive. I found another article online that was interesting. It was a study where they looked at all these different fuel additives and uh, they did a measurement to try and figure out which one actually, which ones worked the best and they rated them from, from best to worst. And they actually had some that when they added them to the fuel this number, which was the, the rating that they were giving it, actually went down. Uh, they gave some other reasons why it may have gone down, so they weren't necessarily saying that it's, it's you know, purely a matter of just a bad additive. But uh, some of the things were kind of surprising that they tried, like uh, used motor oil was one of the things they added. Uh, and then, of course, uh, good old Marvel's mystery oil was on the list. That was down a little bit further. The AMS oil product uh, that I, well, one of the additives that I saw on the list there, that was down on the list further than I thought it would be. The most surprising things were what was number one on the list was biofuel. I think it was soy-based diesel. Uh, the recommendation of actually adding soy-based diesel to regular diesel. Uh, I forgot what the mix was, but kind of interesting. So all four of these have definite signs of wear on them. Little wear edges. So I think I'd like to replace those. And then the question is, if you replace those, should this automatically be replaced with it? Maybe this even comes as a set. I'll have to look into that.